What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm here today at Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida. Matt has given us the fully redesigned 2022 Honda Civic Sedan Touring in your Meteorite Gray Metallic. The 11th generation will have a wider stance, refresh exterior elements, retuned suspension, improved interior. This dates back to the 70s when they only gave us a two-door, a hatchback, and a wagon. The Civic was popular right out of the box. The second generation dates back to the 1980s when the first four-door was out. Now, fast forward today, we have all upgraded with tech, with safety. We're gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. Honda Civic has a new athletic look. It's gonna have a smaller center grille, but it protrudes that Honda symbol, giving a more luxurious look in the fascia. Also has a wider stance look at 70.9 inches. I like how they have the body color to separate the grille from the bumper, giving you an enlarged lower grille. LED fog lamps is set with this, and even though you have the spoiler lip, it just makes it look more aggressive and a lower sit at 55.7 inches. You'll have new LED headlamps. The assemblies will have your low and high beams, which are daylight runnings, all LED. No more side reflectors, so it's a more grown up look and profound look. The hood is a little bit longer, so it does give a little bit more of an elegant stance. The clean aerodynamic lines outline the fenders with 18 inch multi-spoke aluminum alloy wheels the front disc reading at 11.1 inches it's ventilated the rear at 10.2 inches it's solid retuned mcpherson strut front suspension a multi-link rear suspension rework suspension bushings ball joints and dampers honda says this will reduce harshness and noise by 20 percent which is something i complained about with the last generation stretch wheelbase by 1.4 inches that's given us 107.7 inches a length at 184 inches because of all the improvements in the work done in about 0.5 inches wider rear track it should change the dynamics and the test drive we're going to do later on in the review a more modern sporty style as you're looking at it on the side profile you got the chrome over the top of the window trim and the black on the lower i like that on the mirror caps it's the same body color on the caps so it just stresses this is the touring and all the clean lines keep that sport look all the way to the rear with your led reworked taillights new rear bumper no more fake vents so i do like that and i also like it has dual exhaust outlets and they pronounce it with this matte black here so it gives a luxury look to the civic you're going to have a tasteful spoiler lip with your shark fin antenna reverse parking sensors a multi-angle rear view camera going inside to your cargo just push the button and you're going to get 14.8 inches of cubic feet underneath the floor is your spare tire rear bench splits at a 60 40 fold Honda has redesigned and reworked nearly everything. The performance with a 1.5 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged producing 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. Paired with a retuned CVT transmission that has a downshift control that adds braking when you go downhill and it also improves engine response when you push the gas. There's no more manual transmission on the sedan achieving 30 to 37 MPGs. Honda Sensing, that's gonna include your collision mitigation braking, road departure mitigation, adaptive cruise control at low speed follow forward collision warning, lane keep assist. The EX and up will get your blind spot. And because we have the touring, you'll get the rear cross traffic alert. Let me know what you think of the refresh 2022 Honda Civic Touring as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the refresh Honda Civic at 39.3 inches of headroom, 42.3 inches of legroom. It's open, inviting styling. You're gonna be getting leather wrap, Bucket front seats, eight-way power adjustments for the driver. Heated front seats, four-way power adjustments for the passenger. I like the perforated and the contrast stitching, and it feels soft and luxurious, which 
For this segment, I think they did a really good job. The dashboard, I like the retro look that they're doing, especially with the air vents, and it just makes it look really clean. The design even goes behind the upgraded nine inch touchscreen infotainment. Now you do have a pinch. The pinch is a bit weird. You have to touch it and then kind of go off of it. And you do have a swipe. Honda satellite link navigation with voice recognition. Bose 12 speaker audio sound system. HD radio, Sirius XM, wireless charger, dual climate control settings. Now one thing to note, with the dual climate control settings, if you're wearing polarized glasses, it will make it a little bit hard to see the degree on your temperature. Down here, you got some storage next to your phone. You have two USBs and a 12 volt cup holders. You can fit a 20 ounce with no problem. 16.9 ounce water bottle. Again, that retro design coming in. Driver mode select. So now you have a normal, a sport mode, and an eco mode, which makes it a little bit more fun and pleasurable. Opening up in here, you got more storage and a tray that you can move forward and back, and it's a pretty deep area. As for the elbows, soft on both sides. Leather wrap steering wheel, which is really soft. Paddle shifters with the high gloss surrounding the Honda badging, multi-function, and a new 10.2 inch gauge cluster, fully digital. You can reconfigure it, and I like the fact that you can configure the display on the gauges itself so you can make it look round or you can make it look like a bar, which gives it that old retro style. Door panel, you got the high gloss, one touch up and down for both of the front windows. You got that retro design with the metal look. Storage, you can easily fit two to three 16.9 ounce water bottles, and I like the grown up, but yet use feel that they're giving for the front of the cabin. You have your edgeless rear view mirror, moonroof. Let's check out the back seats. For the back seat, I'm at 37.1 inches of headroom, 37.4 inches of legroom. I have loads of space. Unfortunately, the floor is not completely flat. I do have two USB chargers, so it's kind of giving me the indication it's really meant for two people back here. One storage behind the passenger seat, nothing behind mine. Elbows, very soft on this side, a little bit more firm on the door panel. You have your retro look coming back in with the Bose sound system, and I like the high gloss black polish. You can only really fit maybe one-ish 16.9 ounce water bottle. So let's see how I look in the center. Even though I'm sharing my leg space and my shoulder space, I sit kind of down and I sit back a little bit. So head space, no problem. Leg space, I'm grazing the back of the front seats in the position that I'd be sitting. But you can fit three adults my size without too many problems. You will be rubbing shoulders and leg space and there's no center air vents, but the air does circulate around the vehicle. So I still feel the air from the front. If you only fit two back here, it's definitely gonna be more enjoyable and you do feel the air even on the sides or through the center. And the best part about it is you have so much shoulder space when you're fitting two people. Taking the fully redesigned 2022 Honda Civic Touring out, 180 horsepower turbocharged with 177 pound-feet of torque. I mean, they really have reworked everything considering how small the engine is. So far as I've been driving it, it does feel like it hovers at a higher RPM and it feels a lot more precise than the later generation. So I do like that. I feel that they have done the tweaks in order to make it more lively in the Civic line. So giving it a little gas. It's nothing that's gonna really throw you around whenever you just push it and ease into it, but it does drive really smooth. The suspension is very forgiving. I don't feel any impurities in the road, so I do like the fact that those things have been improved. As for the noise, I still hear some wind noise in the wheel well area, but it's not as pronounced as the last generation. So I think they have reworked it. The best thing I would say is realistically, they should have probably added dual pane windows to the side. That probably would have knocked out another 10% give or take stop here in the middle. And I also like the fact that we have paddle shifters now. We're gonna use the paddle shifters, give it some go takes about two and a half RPM to really liven it up. And then she takes off pretty good at that point. And the digital gauge display for the driver, that's definitely a nice touch. As you get up to a higher speed, it's gonna get a little bit noisier, but the engine note, you don't really hear it. So it is more refined with that. 
and hitting the bumps like you see, it doesn't really do any impurities. Like I feel very comfortable in the seat. At a stop point, giving it some gas, ready to rock and roll. And I like the fact that you have this playfulness in the CVT transmission. Braking in the car is good as you saw in the last frame. In the visibility, I can see through all the windows. It does feel a little bit longer than the last generation and I feel more like I'm in an Accord than a Civic. Turn radius at more or less a stop point is gonna be getting two lanes, giving us some gas and it is ready to liven up again. I mean, it's going to get you to point A to point B quick. So that is some good things. And you're getting it with really good gas consumption. The turbo charge is what I would recommend to get because it is refined and it has a little bit more added potency to it than the previous generation. As for dynamics, I mean, you stay relatively planted. It's not necessarily meant to be in that category. Switching it to eco mode and just trying to see how the difference is in it. It seems like the pedal is a little bit heavier. Again, the nice thing is you don't hear that engine because in earlier generations of the Civic, you can hear that engine and it's not necessarily a pleasant, but it's not too unpleasant. I mean, you'll get used to it, but I like the fact that it is more sealed up. I just wish that they would have added a little bit more seals on the window side because the damper system is good. The suspension that is reworked, it feels more rigid, but smooth over everything. So I do like the fact that they did that. Now there is three things that I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. So the three things that I like is the interior. They have really up their game in design. The dashboard, it sets a huge element of retro status that I just like, because it almost mimics an Audi with the honeycomb interior for your air vents. Awesome job with that. Second thing that I like, you have the touchscreen navigation, you have the voice recognition. So the technology, also wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You have all those capabilities in a vehicle around $30,000 or less. That is awesome. The third thing that I like about the vehicle is the size of it. It's not too overpowering, but you can fit five adults my size without any issues. And I know I said three, I'm just gonna throw out one other thing because for some reason it didn't sense my hands and it was telling me to put my hands on the steering wheel just to show how good those functions work inside this vehicle. Now the three things that I dislike about the vehicle is you have to go to the touring in order to get your leather, to get your wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Some of the amenities really push you up into that $30,000 bracket and I wish that they offered it maybe more mainstream instead of pushing you for the EX and up because they really do price you into a different tier. However, for what you're getting, it is a great value. The second thing that I dislike is they're missing a little bit on the charging ports. Realistically, you only have four USBs and a 12 volt. So there's five people. I'm not saying everybody's gonna use them because even me, myself, I never use all these ports. It's just a lot of the brands that are going against this are starting to add more. So it's something that you have to pick on. As for a third thing, I mean, I've been sitting and driving and it's really difficult to find a third thing with the vehicle because even though people are not keen on CVT transmission, I personally own a CVT transmission vehicle, never had any problems with one, but they have retuned this pretty good. I mean, with the turbocharge paired with it, it seems to work very well. This type of vehicle is something that you can just drive and not really worry about anything. The fact that I have power adjustments in both of the front seats, that's awesome. I like the fact that it's comfortable too. I wish it had ventilated seats, but you know, this is the Civic. So getting the heated is good enough and it gives you all of the capacity and capabilities of luxury performance. Zero to 60 is around seven and a half seconds here, you know, so it's not necessarily the fastest, but it's right on spot with the segment. We're gonna take this back to Regal Honda and Lakeland, go over the reverse camera and wrap this review up. Switching to reverse in the multi-angular camera with the trajectory, you can change the viewpoints. That's what that multi-angular means. So it makes it easier for 
or you're reversing. I'd like to thank Matt here at Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida for giving us this 2022 Honda Civic Touring for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details of merchandise and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.